Uh, my brother-in-law just came up here a week ago now. It's our first time actually just spending time together. I'm mean, really getting to know each other. And I gotta be honest, you know, spending that time with my brother-in-law, I got to know my brother-in-law personally for myself, not through my sister. And our bond became better. Things that I really didn't understand, I understood because I created time to spend with my brother-in-law. I got me a little emotional. What's happening? No captain. We with AO, about to get a play go. Pull up to the table. Let's go. 331 people, 331 million people live in the United States of America. Out of those 331 million people, 20 million of them are actually millionaires. 16% uh, of American people are actually millionaires. Um, and as I was doing like my research on this, I, I really realized that these millionaires, people and individuals should probably um, put that on mute there. Um, they are not overnight millionaires. These are not people who woke up one night and boom, they're millionaires. These are people who actually put in a hard work, um, put in dedication, had a plan, aimed for the plan, and it came to pass because of their dedication, because of their character, because of their work ethic. And if you want to be wealthy, just like these other millionaires, you have to start thinking and moving like wealthy people, um, even when you're not. I remember when I was uh, in corporate America and my managers would often say, if you want to be a manager, you got to start thinking like one beforehand. You don't necessarily have to do everything that the manager does, but you need to start thinking and moving and acting like a manager. Um, if you want to be a husband or a wife, before you become a husband and wife, you need to show uh, the uh, person who you're dating that you want to be their best friend, that their significant other, before they even say, uh, will you or I do. You understand? what I'm saying? And so for today, I really want to sit down and talk about the five things that I've learned from other millionaires that I started doing years ago because I knew that I wanted to be a millionaire. And today's goal is that I want to be a multi, multi millionaire. And so I'm even shifting my mindset in the season that we are currently in. Listen to me, uh, my brothers and my sisters. Some of us are moving like thousandaires. We got $1,000 in our pocket. We got $1,000 in our savings account and we're happy. And that's the main reason why you're still making only $40,000, $50,000 a year. Some of us are single. Can we be there? Because we act like we're single. We don't act like. We're not moving like. We actually want to be married. So today's conversation is going to be how to act wealthy when we're not, how to move like wealthy people when we are not wealthy yet. But before we get started and go through the five key things that wealthy people are doing and how they are moving and how we need to be moving as well, I want to thank our first sponsor of today's show, Bethel Tech. Listen, you guys, um, <clears throat> very quickly, um, going into 2023, we got to shift some things. One of the shiftings is going to be us with our career fields. I want you to consider moving into the tech field, especially if you're a minority. Only 2% of the tech field are people of color. Watch this. The average salary inside of tech is about $90,000 a year. You can take this nine month program at Bethel Tech and within nine months, you can be making anywhere between 80 to $100,000 a year. And then with years into the business, maybe say a year or two within the tech field, you're making 120, 150,000, anywhere up to $300,000 a year, depending on the program that you get into. So I want you to go check out my friends over at anthonyoneal.com forward slash Bethel. Tell them you came over for me. They'll give you a scholarship to get you into the program, to put you on a payment plan. And within nine months, you can shift your next nine years. Go check my friends out. Listen, if you're sick and tired of your job, if you're ready for something new, whether in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, or 70s, and you really want to get into a field that is helping people and is helping make millionaires, think differently, move differently by checking out my friends over there at Bethel Tech. Number two, yo, hit that subscribe button, you guys. Man, we're going into 2023. I'm excited. I'm super excited. I am super excited about what God is doing here with our business and our Neatness Network family. Um, so make sure you hit subscribe and make sure you join our email list and our, our text messaging list because we have a lot of great things coming, a lot of great shows. And here's the last thing. You guys, in the comment sections, it is not me. 
Um, Anthony O'Neill, no one from my team is going to ask you to text me on a WhatsApp number, uh, text me um, some money on via WhatsApp. That's not how we move, all right? Um, you will see a blue check mark next to my name, next to the table with Anthony O'Neill or the table with AO check mark, all right? You're not going to see a WhatsApp number. So no, it's not an automatic response for me. No, that's not my team. No, 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 no. We would never ask you for money via WhatsApp, okay? We would never send you a, a, a text saying, hey, text me at WhatsApp. I'm in America. I need to give you my WhatsApp number for. <laughs> so those things in the comments are not me. Look for the check mark next to my name. That's me. So what's the very first thing when it comes to moving like a millionaire? Well, here's number one. You got to live like a millionaire, a multimillionaire on your way to becoming a millionaire. Let me say that one more time. You got to live like a multimillionaire on your way to becoming a millionaire. <clears throat> Now, Anthony, what do you mean? I got to live like a multimillionaire. You want me to go buy a house? You want me to go buy like my dream home and like, I can't even afford it? No, 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 no. Uh, this doesn't mean you're buying, you know, the houses, the expensive clothes, vacations, and cars. It actually means the total opposite. Huh? Yeah, I just got you right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Millionaires, shut this out, they actually live on less than they make. They live on less than they make. If you are making $2,500 a month and you're living at $2,600 a month, you're not moving or thinking like a millionaire. You're moving and thinking like the average people in the world. I was about to say something else, but I don't want to get in trouble with my family. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get in trouble with y'all. But, 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 but immature, stupid people. Live paycheck to paycheck. None of, none of my people, none of y'all, none of y'all listening are immature nor stupid. We're millionaires. We're future millionaires. We're future multimillionaires. And a few of us are future billionaires. You understand what I'm saying? So millionaires live on less than they make. I've had an opportunity to um, sit at the table um, with several millionaires and <clears throat> I was at this one table and this um, one millionaire um, pulled up in a Toyota Camry. Um, I pulled up in my Range Rover. Uh, he came out the car and he had on some Levi jeans, nice nice shirt, and some um, Skechers, some Skechers. And I came out the car with my Range Rover. I had a Louis Vuitton sweater, uh, some Levi jeans. And some Louis Vuitton shoes. I sit down and I'm getting to know, and I'm the best dressed at the table. And I sit down and shook his hand, and when I shook his hand, he had on this one watch that I knew off the top. That watch by itself was worth my car, was worth more than my car and all my clothes. But when I looked at him, I was like, dang. When I saw the car, he got, I was like, dang. And so as I sit down and talk to him and really got to know him, I was like, yo, tell me what do you do? And when he told me what he does, he actually owns um, a lot of Firestone, um, uh, I forgot those little like car places, car maintenance places where they do all your oil changes and tires rotation, stuff like that. And he does maybe about like about 62, 63 million dollars a year, he said. And I was like, man, wow. I said, I knew you did something because of your watch. He's like, yeah. He said, I like to be very, very subtle because if you don't know, if you don't know watches and you, you won't know what kind of watch this is. Um, but I just, I don't like showing my money off. And I was like, wow. I said, where do you live? And he told me where he lived and lives in a beautiful home. And he said, man, you know, he said, he said probably the home. Um, he said, we, we drive modest cars. He pulls up in like in a, in a $10 million home. He said, man, we drive very average cars. I got the Toyota Camry. My wife drives a uh, GMC Yukon. Or is it Yukon? Yeah, a GMC for you know the kids. He was like, "But man, we take expensive vacations. Uh, we love our home. Um, you know, I think she has one expensive purse." He said, "I have this expensive piece of jewelry." He said, "But man, but we just really love freedom. You know, we we just really love peace. We just because we got the money don't mean we need to spend the money." And and, and I was like, "Man, that's that's so funny." And he was like, yeah, he said, when you have money, splurge in some places, but don't splurge every place. He said, the key to building wealth is about keeping your wealth, 
not showing your wealth. And he said, and also the next key is enjoying your wealth without losing your wealth. Key thing was just live on less than what you make. If you got five million, try to live off of two million. You know what I'm saying? But Anthony, you're talking about, well, what are we gonna do with the other three million? Let me tell you what, what, what how, how to live like a multimillionaire. They save and invest the other three million. You see what I'm saying? So it was like, if you, if you got five million, they live off of two, and then they save and invest the other three. So, 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 so if you're making, let's say for an example, $5,000 a month, you should be living off at least $2,500 a month. You're gonna pay taxes, you're gonna save, you're gonna invest the other $2,500. Anthony, what, how, how, how am I going to invest? What should I be investing in? I told you all, how to think and move like a millionaire. You're going to invest into your 401ks. You're going to invest into your Roth IRAs. You're going to invest into your kid's future, 529 custodial Roth IRA. You're going to take advantage of the investing opportunities. Let's say you max out all of your investment opportunities. You're gonna be saving so you can go buy some land. You're gonna be saving so you can go invest into a business. You're gonna be saving so you can go start your own business. You see, millionaires are thinking not just for today, but they're thinking for tomorrow. They're, they're, they're thinking for, okay, 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 how can I grow wealth tomorrow? What are my kids going to need tomorrow? What should I do tomorrow? They're, they're enjoying their money. There's nothing wrong with having something nice. There's nothing wrong with having the nice cars, the nice homes. Splurge, but make sure that your splurge doesn't stop you from investing into more opportunities to bring in more money for you and your family. Um, 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 a lot of people think that millionaires live in these real big, expensive matchings and drive these real big expensive expensive cars and extravagant stuff when you know over at Ramsey Solutions they did a big millionaire study in that uh, most millionaires drive you know average decent cars nice cars they're not broke cars but they drive like your know, nice cars um, and they live in an average size you know home home Maybe anywhere between, you know, like I'm saying, like four to six, seven thousand square feet. I mean, it's an average home for their for their price, um, but they're not out here buying no twenty thousand, thirty thousand square foot home. They're not here buying and only driving, you know, six six figure cars. No, man, no, 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 no. no. Listen, there's three hundred and twenty one million people living in America, and only twenty million of them are millionaires. We should be a part of this number. And you're going to be a part of this number if you just listen to the teachings of what I am teaching. It's not hard to become a millionaire. It's dedication. It is going to take some sacrifices. It's going to take you really listening and paying attention to, you know, what I'm teaching, what other people are teaching, because I'm not the only one you should be listening to. You should be listening to Dave Ramsey. You should be listening to Earn Your Leisure. You should be lis listening to Tiffany Budget Insta. You, you should be listening to all these great minds out here. You should be pulling from all of us, not just me and only me. No, no. We got some great people. That, that, that are helping all of us. I learn from Earn Your Leisure. What? I, I learn from other great people. Why? Because I know I don't have all the knowledge, but neither do they have all the knowledge. Neither do they have all the knowledge, but I'm getting the knowledge so I can become this multi, 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 multi-millionaire. Here's number two. Millionaires are mindful of how they spend their time. Um, I was <clears throat> on um, Clubhouse the other day, and it was in this relationship room. And, um, I, 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 you know, when I get in these rooms, man, I really try not to be. I do know that I cover a lot of things when it comes to relationships, but really I try to cover it around the, the, the perspective of money, right? Like, okay, how how is me dating, um, how is this dating situation impacting my money, right? But I'm still single, and I am still... I'm not, I'm not in a position to give relationship advice. But in this relationship room, they asked him to come up on stage. So I came up on stage 
And they were talking about, you know, how much, you know, how much money, 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 money can you spend? I was like, yeah, you know what, man? I said, Here, here's, here's what I've learned as I have evolved. It is easy for a man to spend money on you, but it is difficult for a man to give you his time. I value my time more than I value my money. Millionaires value their time and what they're doing with their time and how they're using their time more than they actually value their actual money because they understand I can't get my time back, but I can get my money back. Mm. And so I got to ask you, what are you doing with your time right now, my brothers and my sisters? What, what are you doing? Are you on Instagram and scrolling down what people are doing, what she has on? Or are you looking at what's the latest viral dance thing on how you could do it? Which is, which there's nothing wrong with that. But it's all your time consumed with consuming other people's lives and what they're doing. And none of it is being consumed with making your life better, with building your number one asset, which is your brain. We're minding other people's business, but we're not minding our own business. We're making other people wealth, rich and wealthy, but we're not building our own wealth. This is why I tell you all, mind your freaking business. Because your mind is a business. Your mind is a business. So if your mind is a business, use the time to grow your business. How do we do that? What are you reading? How are you growing yourself? Huh? And I left the book upstairs of what I really want to give you all. So let me pull it up on my Amazon account real quick because <clears throat> I really want you all to get this book. I really want you to get this book. Um, let me go to my orders. I forgot the name of the book because I just bought it. Um, I have not read it myself yet, but here it is. Um, uh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, I'm in this uh, mastermind group, this this big group with a bunch of Christians who are all, um, all of us make over seven figures a year within our business. And um, we had the opportunity to sit down with uh, the founder and CEO of Hobby Lobby, uh, David Green with uh, and, and Bill High. And they really talked about how they built this multi-billion dollar business. Right. And so there's this book that uh, that they gave us, which while they were talking to us, which is phenomenal. I have not started reading it yet, but I, I mean, I want you all to read it. Um, uh, and get this book. It's called Leadership, Not by the Book, 12 Unconventional Principles to Drive Incredible Results. And what this book is really going to pr pretty much teach you is how did uh, David Green, the founder of Hobby Lobby, build this amazing Christian organization from a 600 dollar startup company to a eight billion dollar company that gets 50 percent of its profits away. I'm saying one more time. How do you build such an amazing organization? that you started with $600, it became worth $8 billion, and then they give away 50% of their proceeds. Leadership. And so there's this book that I just picked up after really just watching this amazing um, session that we had with him because it was virtual. Um, and just to get the wealth information that I got, you got to read it. You, you, you have to read it. It's, they, they say... Uh, and I'm just going to be real with you all. Some of y'all not going to like it. Let me get ready for the comments. But if they say, if you want to hide something from people of color, put it inside of a book. If you want to hide something from minority people, put it inside of the book. If you want to ignite something inside of people uh, of color, put it on TV and put it in music. Think about it. In music, all of, what do we see? Men calling girls, you know what I'm saying, the B word. Men calling girls hoes. Seeing our ladies strip and, 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 and twerk. Now that, that's what we see our kids duplicating on Skype, uh, not on Skype, on, on Twitter and on um, um, TikTok and on Instagram doing the latest dances and this and that. And like, man, we don't see our young people duplicating mindsets. 
We don't see we don't see young people trying to duplicate building wealth. And I'm not knocking the latest dance scenes because I I'm gonna get involved in some of those things. I ain't gonna lie about that. But at the end of the day, this is what I am saying. We need to start making reading sexy. We need to start learning sexy. We need to make make doing this stuff to grow our number one business become a sexy and appealing thing. Have to. What podcasts are you listening to? What what's the latest sermon you've listened to? But you can tell me the, the whole Beyonce album. You can tell me how Russell Wilson is a simp. You can sit here and tell me what's going on with Kanye, now known as Ye. You can tell me what's going on with Meg Thee Stallion. You can tell me how to throw that leg up and twerk. But can you tell me what book should I be reading that's going to teach me how to invest? Can, can you tell me what podcast I should be listening to that's, that's teaching me how to invest and to build wealth? Can, can, can you tell me, hey, what people in the world, what people on YouTube are actually making moves that is actually transpiring and, and translating over to building wealth? Can you tell me that? When's that time you had a conversation with your kid and you told your kid, hey, you want to go off to college? Here's how you do it. Have you given your kid, have you picked up my book, Debt-Free Degree? Huh? Have you picked up my book, have you read it to get your kid ready to go to college without no debt? Because some of us, the reason why we are living and experiencing some of the hell that we're going through is not because of life. It's because of the lack of us actually taking the time to research, to study, and to read. Some of your kids are going to have debt because you did not take the time to read because you were so busy trying to date. Because you were so busy trying to please your life, trying to catch up with everyone else's life, trying to mind everyone else's business rather than minding your own family's business. Y'all going to be upset with me, but I told y'all at the table, we're going to keep it real, we're going to keep it relevant, and we're going to keep it relatable. My kids will not be broke because I'm taking my time to actually study. So I got to ask you this question. I just got passionate right there. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Are you reading? And are you growing yourself? And you're not growing yourself just for you. Millionaires understand, I'm not reading just for me. Darius Daniels said something a while back on my show, and he said, I thought that Darius actually enjoyed reading. And Darius said, no, I hate reading. <laughs> Darius Daniels is one of the most, um, um, uh, in, in my personal opinion, he is the best communicator um, at, on this planet Earth the best preacher and teacher of the gospel in a relatable way. The dude is just brilliant, but he's brilliant because he said, Anthony, I read because I don't want to suck. I read because I don't want to be last. And now as much as I hate reading, I read and I study not just because I don't want to suck, but because I don't want my family to suck neither because I don't want my kids to have to go through the hell that I went through at a young age. I don't want my wife to have to go through things because I refuse to take time out of my day to read and to grow myself for the betterment of my family. That's why I read and I study. Because time is the only resource you can't make more of. So we have to use it wisely. I want you to set aside time to pursue your dreams or goals every single day. Limit time with needy or oppressive people, you guys. Stop, stop spending so much time with people who need you. I'm not talking about your kids. I'm not talking about your family. I'm talking about, I'm talking about friends. When they come to you, they're always 
pulling from me. They're always saying, oh my God, can you believe this? Oh my God, girl, did you hear about this? Bro, did you see what oh do? Like, no, get away from those people who are pulling energy away from you and get around people who are pushing energy towards you, who are pushing you towards your dreams, who are reminding you, yo, bro, get off of Skype. Yo, I'm, why am I keep saying Skype? <laughs> yo, bro, get off of social media. Yo, bro, get off of Netflix. Yo, bro, get off of this. Yo, bro, let's, let's go get this back. Yo, bro, let's go learn something. Limit your social media time, TV time, and do things that will make you a better person. Now, let me say this too. <clears throat> One of the things that I've learned from millionaires that a lot of them, and I'm going to say these are the millionaires that make a million dollars a year, right? One of the things that I've learned from them all have said, Anthony, now that you're single, man, maximize this time. Get as much income coming in, as much as you possibly can, so when you do get a family, when you do get a wife and you do get kids, you can spend time with your kids. This is a bonus one. I wanna say it's like 2.5, because we, we haven't gotten to three yet. Let me make sure it's not in my notes down there. Yeah, 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 it's good, it's good. We're gonna call this 2.5, 2.5, right? 2.5. And this is kind of a bonus thing. Millionaires wish they could go back and spend more time with their spouses and their kids. Millionaires now are trying to make up time when their kids are in their 20s and 30s and 40s now because they know when the kids were young, they didn't go to soccer games. They didn't go to the cheerleading competitions. They didn't go to the track meets. They, they didn't go to the spelling bees because they were so busy building a successful business that they slacked up on being an amazing father. That they were they were a provider for sure. They they were the priest of their home for sure, and they made sure that the kids had everything. But you know, sometimes kids don't want your presence. They want your presence, and. You can't take time back. You, you can give your kids everything, the cars, the big old birthday parties, the best graduation gift. But really kids, your families, they want your time. Your wife, your, your, your husband, they, they just want your time. And it's like now that I'm building, I'm like, man, okay. I'm 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 teaching myself now. Like, all right, cool. I'm a homebody. You guys, my my, my team will tell you this. You know who dates me, but probably saying Anthony's a little boring because I don't like going out. I actually enjoy being home. And I can't wait to have a wife because I'm enjoy being home with my wife. We're gonna laugh. We're gonna get on each other's nerves. I'm gonna be walking around the house, she's gonna be in the kitchen, I'm going in and just smack her on that booty, like, hey girl. You know what I'm saying? My kids, I'm going to be there when they wake up. I'm going to be there when they come home. I'm going to pick them up from school. I'm going to take them to the ice cream shop and get some ice cream. I'm going to take them to the soccer games. I'm going to be the soccer dad. I'm, I'm going to be the father that show up at school and just have lunch with my kids. You know, I, I'm going to be the father that volunteers. It's going to be me and my wife for sure, but I'm going to be actively in my kids' life because I am creating the time for my kids' life. And to me, that is the best investment I can ever make in my entire life is my, it's my kids. And all my millionaire friends who have built these amazing businesses say, Anthony, if we can go back to when we were your age, we would spend more time with our spouses and with our kids. One guy, he broke down crying, crying. He was like, man, I had, I had an amazing wife. And all she was asking me for was time. But I saw a million dollars come in at one month. And I was like, whoa, wait a million dollars. Then I saw two million dollars come in at one month. I was like, whoa, 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 two million dollars. Then I got hungry for more money and I lost my wife. My wife had everything. She had the, the Bentley truck. She had the 15,000 square foot home. She had the maid, she had the nanny but she didn't have me. 
I'm the youngest one in the circle. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the guy that's making nowhere near. Like what I make in a year, some, a lot of them make that in a month. And it was like, Anthony, what you need to do now is position yourself to where you value your family. That's 2.5. Millionaires value time with their spouses and their kids and their families. Which is why, if you ask my parents, man, I try to see my California parents at least at least once or twice a year. I have nephews and nieces. I try to talk to them at least once a month on FaceTime. And when I go home, I like to spend time with them. I like to take them to the beach myself. I like to call my sister and brother-in-law and say, hey, listen, I'm coming to get the kids, the ones that I can get, because you know, I got small ones. And <clears throat> I like to take them to theme parks if I had the time to. I like to go over the house and just play with them and just let them know, man, I love them. Let them know that I value them. You know, I like to spend time with my sister, my brother, my blood, and just let them know that I love them and I value them. Uh, my brother-in-law just came up here a week ago, and now it's our first time actually just spending time together. I'm really getting to know each other. I got to be honest, you know, spending that time with my brother-in-law, I got to know my brother-in-law personally for myself, not through my sister. And our bond became better. Things that I really didn't understand, I understood because I created time to spend with my brother-in-law. I got me a little emotional. Cause I be transparent, man. I was just telling to my team the other day. They all got spouses. And I got a dog. And I'm like, man, I can't wait. I cannot wait. We joke a lot, but I cannot wait to be like, you know what? I joke on CJ all the time and Alex. They be calling their spouses and like, boo, I love you. I love you too. I love you. I love you too. Alice's son be calling him, you know, he be looking at it, you know, looking through the phone, I mean, I miss my kid. And I be like, oh boy, you're working right now, shut up. You know, but I laugh because it's like, one day that's gonna be me. I'm gonna be recording, I'm gonna be like, hold on a minute, y'all, hold on a minute. What's, hey babe, how you doing? I love you too, girl. I love you too. <laughs> but I, I laugh about it because I genuinely do look forward to that day. And I look forward to saying, you know what? I can't do this because I'm gonna spend it with my wife. I look forward to saying, hey, babe, I can't, I can't do this. I'm gonna spend it with my kids. I look forward to, to, to telling my team, yo, I can't come into the office today. I'm spending it with my kids. To me, that builds more wealth than anything, my family. I want to thank our second sponsor um, of today's show, um, Prize Pool. Prize Pool is the leading savings account in America for online. Um, if you're looking for an online bank that you can save and park your emergency fund and save and park your um, 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 investment funds or dream fund in, and you're looking for a high return, Oh man, this is absolutely an amazing account to actually open up uh, because not only will you get the flat uh, interest rate for return, but then you also will get other bonuses that will give you on average about a 3% return on your money for just letting your money sit there. They're giving away anywhere between $100 to up to $25,000 a month uh, to people for grand prizes for you just parking your money in your savings account. So I want to highly encourage you to go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash savings, open up your prize pool account, and if you put $500 in there or more, they're going to give you more tickets to go towards more grand prizes, and every single day you keep your money in the account, they're going to reward you with tickets for every single day you have money sitting there for emergencies, for your grand prize trips, you name it. So head over to anthonyoneal.com forward slash savings, check them out, open up an account. Y'all, put your emergency fund over there. I part my emergency fund, and you know, I'm looking to get into some little more uh, uh, rental properties, so I'm parking some money over there to save for that. So join me over there, prize pool. All right, <clears throat> man, I got a little emotional there. Let me let me get back into this thing. Here, here's here's three. All right, here's number three. Millionaires think differently about money 
Self-improvement and relationships. What, what, what do you mean, Anthony? What do you mean they think differently about movement when it comes to self-improvement and relationships? Here's number one. They know the difference between real rich and fake rich. Okay? Millionaires know the difference between being real rich and fake rich. Just because somebody is rocking the latest clothing items and driving a nice car doesn't mean and doesn't make them actually wealthy. Now, I'm not saying wealthy people don't have on nice stuff because y'all gonna see me with nice stuff on because I'm, I'm, I'm actually starting to like it. But for years, I was making good money, you guys, and y'all never really saw me wear luxury brand stuff. Why? Because I was focused on making sure that I had at least six plus figures sitting in my savings account, that I had 100%, um, I was 100% debt free, that I had at least a home, uh, uh, I had a home, and then I had at least one of my dream cars. Like I had a foundation of what I wanted to do and max out the basics. Now that I have the basics, I'm investing, I got my home, I got my car, and I got my savings account, and I'm sitting there clean. Yo, listen, from there, it's like, all right, cool, great. Now I can start enjoying my money a little bit more, a little bit more. Watch this. I didn't say I could start enjoying all of my money. I said I could start enjoying a little bit of my money. A little more and that's what I'm doing and so when you just because you see someone with Louis just because you see someone with Gucci doesn't make them rich you guys it doesn't it just means that they actually had enough money to buy that item but we don't know if they had enough money to buy something else so keep that in mind uh, number two is take debt off of the table. You see, wealthy people prioritize paying off the credit cards and student loans because they know it only holds them back if they don't. If, if, if wealthy people, what I'm seeing is you have two, two versions of wealthy people, right? And here's my version of wealthy people. When I actually can enjoy my money and I have margin, the more debt that I have, the less wealth and the less margin that I have. Uh, because wealth is all about how long can you last without having any more income coming in. So the more debt that I have, it takes away from my true wealth. So you have a lot of people um, who are rich um, per numbers, but they have a lot of debt, okay? They have a lot of debt. I'm not knocking those people, that's just not the side that I'm on. The side that I'm on are the wealthy people, the millionaires who are saying, you know what? I wanna have no debt, I wanna carry no debt, I wanna pay no interest and penalties, um, and so I'm just maximizing where I'm at now. And these wealthy people understand that if I can just have freedom and no bondage, then I can focus on building a solid present going into my future. Okay, so number one is they know the difference between real rich and fake rich. Number two, they take debt off of the table. Number three, they focus on improving yourself, not comparing yourself to others. I'm in competition with Anthony O'Neill, not with you, not with no one else. How can I continue to grow? How can I stay in my lane and live in my lane and watch this own my lane? I only compare myself to myself. Now watch this. I do use others for encouragement. When I see somebody else winning, it is proof to me that if they can win, so can I. But I'm not looking at them saying, well, if they could do it, I could do it 10 times better than them. And I don't know why they went over there to them. No, win. My brother, win. My sister, win. It's just proof that if you can win, I can win, because the same God that made you is the same God that made me. Millionaires are not comparing themselves to others. They're saying, yo, let's get it. Thank you for showing me it can be done. Now I'm about to go do it. Number four, up on these millionaires think differently. They have a strong network of mentors, friends, and mentees. Because millionaires understand about who they are and who they're connected to is way more important than what they know. Let me say it one more time. Millionaires understand that who they are and who they know is way more important than what um, they actually have, right? Because it's like, think about this. I won't say the name of this pastor. It's a big time pastor. I was in a small circle with him, and he said, man, you see that uh, the Rolls Royce outside? I was like, yeah. How much did he expense for? I said, oh, man, easy, 400000 brand new. He said, zero. 
I was like, what? I was like, yeah, when you know, watch this, the person who owns it, you ain't got to spend nothing. Because we've built a relationship over the last years. And because I've been able to sow into his business. He's been able to sow into my church. And he's like, hey, man, just take it. We'll give, you, we'll give it to you for free for what, a year. I was like, wait, what? So, yeah, there's a write-off for him. You see, wealthy people understand if I know this person and if I build a true and healthy relationship with this person, it's going to benefit us both down the road. Doors that I've been able to get into is not because I bought my way into the door. It is because I knew the person who was behind the door who can open the door. Some of us have pushed relationships away. Some of us have ruined relationships that today could have been a door into a business deal, a door into a brand deal, a door into anything that we may have needed, but because we burnt that relationship, now we have a problem. Now that door is closed. You see, wealthy people keep powerful minds around them because those powerful minds can change them and their worlds. Some of you will have closed some relationships because of your immaturity, because of your pride. I want to encourage you to go back and fix those relationships. I want to encourage you to go back and to make those relationships better. It may take you some time. It may even make you feel uncomfortable because you got to apologize for your stupidity and your immaturity. I'm telling you right now, relationships can be just as strong or stronger than actual money. Get back with those relationships. And here's the last thing, and learn to trust yourself. You see, millionaires take action. They don't spend time worrying about what others think of them or if they're going to fail. They just trust themselves and they go for it. You know how many people told me that starting the table or me branching out on my own or uh, me um, doing what I wanted to do was not smart, it's not wise, it's not going to work, da 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 And, you know, a part of me actually believed them. I'm like, man, will it work? Probably it won't work. I don't know. And you know what? You guys, I got to say that a part of me thought about quitting. A part of me was like, man, maybe they're right. Maybe I should just go back into full-time ministry and just preach and just pastor. No. Nah. No. Nah. I'm so grateful that I didn't. Because we've been able to build a great business that have definitely has had its ups and its downs. Uh, but, man, we've been able to help a lot of people, make a, lot of, make a lot of money by helping people. But because I was willing to trust myself and to trust what God told me to do, when other successful people told me I would not do that, uh, and I don't know if that's going to work. Friends, people who called me brothers, you know, uh, a brother, I said, I don't know, bro, if it's going to work. I don't know, bro. I just, but then I remember I had a brother like Dr. Darius Daniels who looked at me in my eyes and said, boy, I think this is God. I had people like my best friend, Pastor Stephen Chandler here, here at Union Church telling me, like, yo, this is God. You, this is what you have to do. And because I trusted the right voices around me and I trusted myself, look at where we are today. Look at where we are today. We have grown tremendously over the last year and five months. Learning a lot, trying a lot, ups and downs. Had some long nights where I felt like crying. I've had some days I had to pause and call my therapist. But I trust myself and I trust my team and I trust the people around me. Number four, number four. Millionaires are good stewards of what they have. Luke chapter 16 verse 10 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Take care of what you have, you guys. 
Even if you drive a Honda with 200,000 miles on it, yo, you're gonna drive the thing like it's a Rolls Royce with five miles on it. You're gonna wash that car every week, ladies. You're gonna make sure your back seat don't have heels and 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 hair and weave and and draws and lipstick and and makeup and 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 you know what I'm saying uh, all that kind of stuff in the back seat. Okay. You can't ask God to give you the best when you can't take care of something that may not be the best. You can't ask God to give you a pay raise when you can't even take care of thirty five thousand dollars a year. You can't ask God to give you a million dollar home when you can't take care of the two hundred thousand dollar home. You can't ask God to give you a great man when you can't even take care of yourself, great woman. You can't ask God to give you a great woman, brothers, when you can't even pay your own bills. Millionaires are good stewards of what they have. Watch this. Because see, a lot of y'all think millionaires are people who make a million dollars a year. When a large portion of the millionaires don't even make a million dollars a year. They make in between 80 to about $120,000 a year, but they were good stewards of that income. They saved and they invested well. You have people who make a million dollars a year and they're not millionaires. Oh. Do you know why? It's because they're not good stewards of their resources. They're not good stewards of their resources. You want to think like a wealthy person? Y'all want to fake it until you make it? Think. Be a good steward of your money. Be a good steward. Here's the last thing. Number five. Millionaires take care of their health. Mm. Y'all can hear it in my voice right now. I'm coming down with a little cold and and I was like, all right, man, I know what I got to do. I got I to jump on an emergency seas. I know I need to rest my body. When I get sick, my body tells me it needs rest. So I told my team, we're going to record. Y'all can go down there and edit. I'm going to rest because I still got to keep this energy up, you know. Uh, but wealthy people work out at least three times a week and they eat well and they take care of their bodies. I'm seeing all these new things that wealthy people are doing from getting out IVs, um, from getting these little air things on them. Like they're really understanding like, hey, if I'm going to invest money like LeBron James, they say he spends anywhere between a million to two million dollars a year just on his body. Now, I'm not saying we could do that because we ain't got a million dollars to be putting away, but we could eat right. We could work out. You know, we could be taking the right vitamins. We, we could be making sure that our bodies are good. And here's the thing. When your body is talking to you, listen to your body. Listen to your body. I know my body. My body, when it starts giving me the little hiccups here and there, like I was telling my team the other day, when my body breathes, when I feel like I'm breathing in hot air, it's like, okay, you're coming down with something. I immediately stop. I, I become a lazy guy. I take meds. I drink water. I jump on emergency seas. And I just rest my body because I am always on the go. I'm always on flights going up and down, up and down, different environments. And my body is telling me like, hey, bro, you've been on the road. We need to recover. I was in the bed at seven o'clock last night, seven o'clock. Cause I know my body. I listen to my body and wealthy people take good care of the bodies. Wealthy people also manage their stress by hiring coaches and therapists. Ooh -wee. Ooh -wee. Wealthy people, okay. Manage their stress by hiring life coaches and therapists. I was, um, I'm actually thinking about hiring an actual life coach. I have a therapist through BetterHelp, and I think that you all should really definitely take check them out. You can go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash BetterHelp. Um, check them out. Wasn't mean to, to mention them today, but if you're looking for a therapist, because wealthy people do honestly look up um, a therapist, and they see a therapist actually like every week. Um, married couples and situation, um, not situations, but when it comes to situations. Um, but BetterHelp will give you like 10% off this month. 
um, and it's, it's, it's a great avenue. But you got better help, and then you have uh, therapists, and then you have life coaches. I'm just now getting into life coaches because I have noticed that wealthy people are honestly starting to hire life coaches where it is not a therapist, but they're talking about life goals, life dreams, life experiences, and helping them focus on a healthy part of life. And I was like, yo, that's actually pretty brilliant. So I'm looking for one. I'm looking for a life coach uh, just to see if I can find someone that fits my life um, and that could really, really help me out because anything I could do to help me prolong my life, I want to invest in. And a life coach is brilliant. A life coach is actually brilliant. What do people value? Family, friendships, because they know that at the end of the day, Money doesn't make them happy, but love brings them joy. Love from friends, love from their family. So acting wealthy isn't necessarily buying expensive things and pretending to be better than the people. It's a shift in your actual mindset and your habits. And it's something you can start doing right now. You can do that by, like I said, living on less than what you make. Save and invest most of your income. Mind, be mindful of how you spend your time. 2.5, spend quality time with your family, your friends. Number three, think differently about money and, and invest into self-improvement in relationships. Be a good steward of what you already have. And last, but definitely not least, take care of your health. That's how you act wealthy today. That's how you act wealthy today. Some of you all, I feel, just need to shift your mindset. It's not the cars. It's not the rings. It's not the jewelry. It's, it's not the money to impress her brothers. I think one of the best ways we can impress ladies is by truly showing them our mindset, our wealthy mindset. Showing them where are we going and let them see the fruit of what we said. I wanna leave y'all with a scripture. When I do my solo shows, I'm always looking up scriptures and here's one scripture, Proverbs chapter four, verses six through seven, it says, do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Here's today's affirmation. Self-discipline and stewardship will make you wealthy. Mm, that's so good right there. I want y'all to say that with me one more time. I want you to say it loud. I want you to say it proudly. I want you to say it with some aggressive uh, words and actions and power behind you. That self-discipline and stewardship will make you wealthy. Type it in the chat if you're watching on YouTube. Hey, if you're listening to this on podcast, we love you. Thank you so much for joining us. But say it loud and proud in your car. Listen, let's act wealthy. Let's get the bag. But before we get there, let's put those five things into place. Yo, it's your boy, Anthony O'Neill. I'm going to see you on the next show. Peace out.